Hello everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in Fuhrerreich Legacy of the Great War on patch 0.4. So there's a new update at the time of this recording, in which they have a new few focus trees for Spain in Fuhrerreich, as well as Afghanistan and South Africa, which obviously, as you can tell from the thumbnail, we are going to be playing as. Custom game rules, I'm not going to change this up too much, I'm just going to leave it at whatever it already is at, except... I want to make Italy go nationalists. That's the only thing I want. Italy will elect the nationalist faction in the 1936 election. That's the only thing we're going to change just because I don't want to see an extremely strong French Republic allied with the Kingdom of Italy because I might try to join the Stahl Pact and Germany isn't super strong, at least in my experiences in Führerreich. Maybe your experiences are different, but in my experience... Germany usually doesn't do so well at the start of the Second Weltkrieg or Second World War, but regardless, we are playing as that great, great Union of South Africa. So, uh, it's a new focus tree. There's a Black Wednesday, which eventually arrives. I'm joined here with my cat, Binky, and the, uh, he's on the ground. We have elections coming up, but something cool about the South African focus tree is that a lot of these focuses are only 35 days. That's really cool. So for now, we can't do Imperial Concerns, we can't do Black Wednesday Arrives, we can't do the elections because it's not 1937, in which eventually we might be able to join the Stahl Pact, maybe? We'll see what happens. So we're going to choose something with our military. Now, with the Union of South Africa, I want be to become independent from the Imperial Federation, Imperial Association, basically South Africa for South Africans. Uh, we could do stuff with the Air Force. Eh. The Union Navy, actually, we have zero dockyard, so it's it's okay. We, we're going to make some light cruisers eventually. But let's do the Union Army because we can. While we have always relied on the British Empire to supply our defenses, many in our country would rather that we create our own Union Army beholden to no interests but our own. We get quite a chunk of Army XP. Now let's use the normal stuff, production stuff. I don't even know what these are called. Construction 1 or something. Whatever, it's all the normal stuff. Everyone does. Most people do at the beginning of the game. Uh, let's see, you guys are 12 combat width, while you guys are 6 combat width with signal companies, which I basically never use. We have two military factories, so we'll get some rifles. Yeah, grab a lot of rifles. We're going to need those. We might use tanks, but tanks are tanks, and tanks are okay. Uh, we really don't have a big military, which is really unfortunate, or at least a big industry, which I would totally love to have. Build some of that stuff up, that'd be great. Uh, don't do, don't build it in Natal, or Natal? Probably Natal. What do we want? Uh, we might as well get this, get two at a time, raise that up, lower that down, and we're good to begin. That's all we have, because we ha we literally have no ships. Uh, as you can tell by here, but Führerreich Alpha, build point four, zero point four point zero. Thank you. Thank you, new events? Cool, I prefer to see all news events. We have about 100,000 manpower. We are currently on Volunteer Only, so the Union of South Africa. If you would like to skip this, because I'm going to read this, go ahead about a minute in. So, ex unite virus union is strength. The Union of South Africa is in turmoil. While the Third Boer War, fought alongside the end of the Great War, successfully ended any further thoughts of Boer resistance, the situation in South Africa has deteriorated over the past 20 years. It could soon see a resurgence of violence not seen since that conflict. Following its 1922 annexation of Rhodesia, hmm, and its 1926 acquisition of Beushanland, the nation was beset by protests, rise, and violence, denied a referendum on joining the Union. Wealthy Rhodesian settlers demanded independence, while the natives in Beushanland and the rest of South Africa grew restless in the light of continued oppression and segregation. Today, these violent elements draw close to a breaking point. <coughs> Excuse me. The House of Assembly is currently run by the National Party, which itself is growing increasingly anti-British following the passage of the Statute of Autonomy, with some fringe MPs demanding complete independence from the Empire altogether. The opposing South Africa Party finds opposite problem, a lack of popularity because of its much more moderate positions and willingness to continue South African expansion without addressing ex ex existing issues in Rhodesia and Kalahari territory, yet both parties face an increasingly polarized society between the Afrikaner and English populations and cultural and racial tension throughout the nation. Other fringe elements in society, including the much more liberal African National Congress and the much more nationalist Osvabravag party, also seek a say in the nation's government. Much hinges on the upcoming 1937 elections. Soon the nation will have to make a choice between anti-imperialists and dominionists, 
integration and separation and expansion or self-reflection. Union and strength. And of course, in every Führerreich beginning, there is a slight Indian revolt because I guess Gandhi is no longer with us. Memories of Mahatma. Ooh. Oh, he, he died in 1924. Jesus. That was a while ago. Currently, we get 1.5 political power a day with 42% popularity with coalition popularity of authoritarian Democrats, 37% stability, 43% war support, and 11 factories to our name. Oh, buddy, boy. A statement from the All-African Congress, which is important to read. So, the All-African Congress of various representatives from across the country met in December of 1935 and released official statements from its meeting. The organization has condemned the national government's attempts to further segregate whites and native black Africans, which have been spearheaded by extremist elements of the National Party. The All-African Congress has also called for a roundtable discussion with representatives of both parties involved to come to a quick and peaceful resolution. While the All-African Congress is a little more than a liberal protest organization, it may be wise to consider their words. What a ridiculous proposal, and if you hear things in the background, that's just my family members shouting at each other. Welcome to South Africa. Cool. So, like I said earlier, my goal is to hopefully join the Stahl Pact, maybe, depending on how they do. That's why I let Af India go... India. Italy. Uh-oh. That's why I want Italy to go nationalist to break up that little French block and Italian block. So, ooh, a peaceful ending at midnight. Well, why do we lose political power? He's just a king. And we want to uh, dismantle Imperial Africa eventually. I could go down Imperial Cooperation. <clears throat> But it sounds like a lot more fun to dismantle Imperial Africa. And I don't really want to click on this. I'm going to leave it to the right and ignore it. Another dead monarch. You know, whatever. That's okay. And co something cool about Führerreich that they added. Uh, laws and government. We're a constitutional monarchy, so we get an extra 20% political power. There's different government types, which obviously we can't change because it's always false. But that's actually really cool. So we have the Union Army here. We get more Army XP, which is very nice. But so since we want to become independent of British rule, we're not. Uh, we eventually... We can do lessons from the British. We can do Legacy of the Great War, which gets more recruitable population factor, or we could get more stability. Uh, I'm going to go with this right side, probably, because we get armor bonus. We get less supply consumption versus population factor, land doctrine. Mobile warfare doctrine would be really cool. Produce a little bit more stuff. Uh, living out the land sounds pretty good. So, through the hills. We must understand that war is not only about attacking, but also about defending. And the easiest place to defend our home is in the hills. We must ensure that our soldiers are equipped to do so. Oh, an assassination of some Turkish guy. How terrifying. Alright, now I can do this just because I have enough political power. One and a half a day is always very nice. Ooh, we... Hmm. We might want to get that dockyard. Just so we can build up some naval XP for a long-term gain. But yes, Fear Reich, it's been a... Not... Super long ago since I played Fear Reich. Last time I played Fear Reich was when I played as the United States, which still has the exact same focus tree as I played last time. They're led by Charles Curtis. So, you know, it is what it is. They'll probably be led by Huey Long eventually, maybe? Unless they choose Quentin Roosevelt, Alf Landon, or Nance Gardner, but they probably will choose Huey Long. They have the state of Iran. What is Afghanistan doing? Let's take a quick look at their focus tree. The Indian Revolt's looking pretty good right now. Uh, they have a backward army and economy. They have... Pretty divided, actually. Mounting opposition to the king. Afghan nationalism and tribal influence in Afghanistan. Power struggle in the Soviet Union. Let's see who will win. Very nice. And this is their new focus tree, which is... Not extremely huge. Which is, you know, sometimes okay. But that's the reason why I did not play as Afghanistan yet. There, I haven't seen too much where we... If I choose to play as Afghanistan, there's not too much expansion... And that's what I always like, having lots of expansion. Maybe I'm wrong. I haven't looked at it too hard, but it looks cool, but maybe I'll play them someday. So, Legacy of the Boer War. Uh, some more stability is always, always good to get, but let's go with the Union Navy. So, while we still rely on Britain to provide production at sea, we are a coastal nation, and as such may want to see how much we can start providing for ourselves so that we can get some free naval dockyards so that we can get some free naval XP. We're trying to get some more fuel. Daily gain, 48. That's pretty much the default. Uh, you'll f fill our fuel capacity in 1.9 years. We have a quad civil war here, but we have a political earthquake. J.B.M. Herzog, the Prime Minister of South Africa, along with Jan Smuts, leader of the opposition South African Party, announced today that Smuts' members of Parliament will be merging with those of the governing 
National Party to form the new United Party. Smutsu and Herzog said that such a merger will lead to a much needed unity in the House of Assembly, though moderates in the South African Party and extremists in the National Party alike have balked at the move, declaring allegiance to two entirely new parties, the Dominion Party and Purified National Party. It remains to be seen how voters will react to the merger of the two rival parties in the next election. So, United Party becomes ruling party. Oh, wow, that's a lot more stability. And hello, Lord Hyde. We are now united. Thank you very much, Fear Reich, for this pop up. Cool. 47%. We are social conservatives, my friend. Socially conservative. Yeah, so we have a good old death set of infantry equipment, which is never nice to see. We, maybe we should get a general and start training our soldiers to be at least regulars. George Edwin Brink. Good to have you here. So with this political power, I'm probably going to raise my mobilization to early mobilization so we can build stuff as fast as possible. That'd probably be good. Or we could get just another factory. Uh, right now we have seven going. I could probably use successful negotiations in India, stability in India returns. Oh, okay, so the Indian vault was crushed. Afghanistan does have the option early game to take Peshawar and Keta, but obviously they didn't do it in this timeline, I guess, in this episode. Whatever. The Union Navy. Next up. Dockyard construction. Our existing naval bases are sorely lacking in the way of modern equipment. We must upgrade our existing docks and build new ones to ensure that we have a navy to be proud of. Absolutely. And of course, they did that... If you're right, they did that one agreement about the Middle East. It looks disgusting. Also, but we have legislation on the native vote. As part of the agreement between the former parties that now make up the United Government, the House of Assembly has agreed to hold hearings and debates on a series of bills designed to address the current voting rolls. Nationalist Afrikaners in the Transvaal support purging the voter rolls of all native African voters and transferring them to a separate role. Doing this would split would spit in the face of British Parliament, who still frowns upon our history of discrimination, because they are pure people. Yet if we refuse, we risk a further fracturing our fragile coalition. Let's see. More social conservatism, social de democracy. Well, it's kind of important to know what's going on because you don't get to say which party you want to lead. So something good for social democrats, something old for social conservatives, and something bad for not these two. Uh, if I wanted to, we could go down that path. If anything, I guess we'll go with social conservatism because we're already that party, even though we want to be really quite independent of Great Britain. A strange interregnum. China descends towards a deeper chaos. Well, better them than us. And the Japanese spy b arrested by British Admiralty. Interesting. But let's go ahead and raise our mobilization so we can get just maybe one more factory and build things just a tiny bit faster. Uh, the next thing I'll do, though, is definitely issue a civilian factory commission just because there's a certain amount of time you have to wait before you can click this again. But we have basic machine tools. Max factories in state, 15%. Uh, this is usually better to do uh, dockyard output. Yeah, just do dispersed. Why not? Empire Day. So, celebrated yearly since the death of Her Majesty Queen Victoria, Empire Day has once again come to pass. Widely acknowledged throughout the, Euro throughout the Empire, this day represents the bonds that bind the Europe, or bind the Empire, and those that make us family. Our shared history and our common culture, our respect for rule of law, and liberty above all. As people across the British Empire host parties and marches, we are reminded of our shared destiny, that Britain and her faithful sons and daughters will never falter. And so that as long as we stand together, we can overcome any difficulty to the help of the Empire, our friends, and abroad. I'm only going to read that once just because... It happens like once every year, so whatever. Cool. Uh, the Soviet Union looks pretty interesting as well. I haven't played as them in Fiorike yet. They're led by Karov. Politically divided. And then they also have lacking industrialization. And Portugal's having an identity crisis. Hmm. Premier Karov, the great industrialization drive. That's pretty cool. A little bit of lag here and there because the Kingdom of Belgium declared war on itself. Okay, well, this is the first time I've seen this. Holy cow. Bastogne? Linguistic debacle. Small arms factory. Who are you? Leopold? Oh. You're the guy who likes hands. Uh, oh, you have, you have a generic... Oh, that's kind of disappointing. You have a generic focus tree, while workers... The worker state of Belgium has its kind of a unique focus tree. We've got some doctor construction. Great, great, great. Next up. Uh, we could do that. We definitely want to come down here eventually, but let's do Legacy of the Great... Or the Boer Wars. The Boer Wars have taught us much about guerrilla warfare and fighting in the hills and mountains. We must learn from them so as to avoid repeating them, or if necessary, win them faster. So, this is what we're going to do. We're going to build, not this, but a single VW-class destroyer. Just a single one. So we can 
abuse the naval experience gain in this game, or this mod, or just really Hoi 4, yeah, the game itself. I won't be able to build a big navy, but I'm thinking we might spam the hell out of submarines, because why not? Yeah, we'll do that. I'll probably keep one research slot eventually on subs, making sure we have the best subs, because even though subs are okay in mass, they can probably do pretty well. Pretty darn well. Give me just one moment, please. My apologies about that. My uh, South African kitty binky wanted to be released from my room. So we have construction one, which is great. Let's grab... Uh, resource efficiency game wouldn't be bad, but let's maybe get some better fighters. We might not ever really be able to use those, but that's okay. Uh, promote the status quo, cut out the red tape, more stability sounds nice, but let's just go ahead and grab another factory. 9 out of 10, and then we'll raise our mobilization one more time to get to partial mobilization so we can use stuff and make them even faster. What I really like about this focus tree though is that most of the focuses, not all, but most of these focuses are only 35 days. Next up, Scorched Earth? Let's do this one. Shock initiatives. Shock and awe is very effective in disrupting enemy movements and scattering them. If we focus on quick in and out shock initiatives, we could put the tactic to very, very effective use. So I'm not really sure which land doctrine I should go down at the current moment. Let's see, 0.52, that's not bad. Uh, of course, everyone is, knows superior firepower is probably still the best. I don't really have the industry for tanks. I'd love, really love to have tanks. I just don't think I have the industry for it, so I'll probably go down for superior firepower, mass assault. It gives you a little bit more population, but eh, it's okay. Grand Battle Plan isn't actually too bad either. After playing as a German Empire in Kaiserreich using this battle plan, it's not too bad. I kind of like it. And there goes Republican Spain. Very nice. So we have another division. Great. Here's what we're going to do as well. Uh, command. I like that one, but it's okay. I'm going to use you. I'm going to do this. I'm going to make you 10 combat with, because we're going to need some guys on coasts. District Brigade, Garrisons, G-Boys, there you go, but add, uh, just make one at a time, we don't need them too much, so, oh, we're going to need some support equipment for that, too, probably, wait, why did I throw that on there, what the heck, why did I throw artillery, I need engineers for that, um, honestly, we'll probably get enough of that, uh, why did I do that, I don't know why I did that, just, do that. So, legislation on native representation. Having created a separate voter role for an all native African voters, the House of Assembly is ob obligated to determine what this new role shall be used for. Currently, it only serves to list African voters separately. Extremists and nationals, however, have pushed to bar natives from voting for members of the legislature entirely, only allowing them to vote for four representatives at large who will represent their interests before the House. Liberal groups and even some in the Unity Party are balking at this blatant segregation, but national extremists are adamant that it must be done for them to maintain their loyalty to the United Government. Pass the bills. We need not to go farther than what we already have. Reject the bills. Well, to separate yourself from Britain, you really have to go down the national populism route, so... <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, we have to go that way. Hmm, hmm, yeah. I'm not saying it's good, I'm just saying that's, that's the only way we can separate ourselves from Britain. Get new commander, Christian de la Rey. Why do you have that? Why, Christian? Why? Why must you hurt me so? So you guys are five. You have some support company stuff. That I like it. Got some shock initiatives, but it's okay. Next up, defensive tactics, scorched earth, less supply consumption. Uh, it's all else. Only mid 1936. Forts are okay. We could build screens faster if we do this. Light cruiser. Ooh, I like light cruisers. Hmm. Radar's nice. Strategic destruction's okay. Battlefield support. Yeah, this stuff is all okay. But I guess we'll go with Scorched Earth. So, by destroying the land that is being fought over, armies can ensure each other's starvation and the weakening of partisan activities that might occur behind front lines. Yes, yes, and then yes, some more. Cool, do we have a ship yet? No, we don't. It should be out soon enough. However. Yeah. Cool. And by September, we'll have a ship. Hmm. Hmm. That's okay for now. Yeah, I'm going to put you right there. There you go. Very nice. As the time go on, get Scorched Earth, Legacy of the Boer Wars, Boer Wars. 
What is everyone up to? Italy, you're probably hopefully going nationalists. The monarchists are looking pretty big in Spain. You're social democrats. You are allied, of course, to France for now. Libya. Maybe nationalist France actually. Nationalist Italy does ally with France. I don't know. I don't remember Fear Reich that well, to be honest with you. I play a lot of Old World Blues, so. Oh, lit on native land ownership. Another series of bills from the, that the House of Assembly will hold on native African segregation address land ownership. Nationalists, element of the United Party, and the new purified National Party have put forth legislation which would give the government authority to forcibly remove natives who live in areas surrounded by white settlers and expand reservations in other provinces. Critics of the bill suggest that this could empower the government to relocate natives from most of the country entirely. Once again, we are faced with the choice between what's right and what we need to keep our standing in the House. Uh, votes? We need votes, but this is as far as we'll go, or they're going too far, reject the bills. <clears throat> mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 Hey, look, nine. And we can build it faster now. Industry, everyone, industry. So for you guys, go ahead and tra eh, train that last guy for now. That'd be okay. Oops. Ooh. I wanted to rename this army of South Africa. There you go. Scorched Earth. Great. We haven't had no crisis yet, which is awesome. So, protect our shores. That's not bad. Living off the land. Rather than worry about burdensome supply lines, we must ensure that our soldiers have the skills and tools at their disposal to live off of the land that they have occupied if needed. Of course, we do need a little bit more steel, but that's mostly for these ships. Mostly, so we can probably wait on that. It is now September, which is okay. We'll probably raise our conscription level eventually, just so that we can do a little better. Scorched Earth. Nice. Like I see the Boer Wars. Anti-British sentiment, which is fine. Resistance to integration. Global crash reaches South Africa. The effects of the London stock market crash have reached South Africa already. Local economies across the nation are reeling as unemployment skyrockets. Nationalists and leaders of the Purified National Party are claiming that the South African economy would still remain strong today if it had rejected the authority of Parliament and left the Empire completely. While many understand this... Interesting. As blatantly false, there is still a general sense of animosity towards the British growing amongst the populace. This only serves to compound upon already existing issues. Darn the British and their wars. Oh my goodness, that construction speed and output. No, I'm going to put you down here so I don't see you anymore. I'm not looking at that. Nope, nope, nope. And we have, wow, that's a lot of days to really acknowledge what's happening. Which is great because I want to finish this first. Because once that's done, then we can go do Black Wednesday Arrives. Which would be great. Oh, that's 70 days. But it auto-completes, I think. Austerity. Ooh. Let's look at mechanical computing instead of what happens. It's 1936. That's good. And we have a dispersed industry uno. Hmm. 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 I did say I want subs. Even though we get better production for light for screens, I think subs is where we're going to have to really try, try it. Oh, okay, now we have living off the land. Now I can click on that. Cool. Because that opens up this. Let's give it a day, maybe. Let's give it one day, see what happens. There we go. There we go. So we want to be independent of Britain, right? We could do government intervention for us. But that leads to social democracy, which we don't want. So we have to go with austerity. But I want to go down to scientific subsidies first. We could prioritize a cape for civilian factory and infrastructure. We could prioritize Transvaal for more support from those people. We get some more resources, which actually sounds pretty nice. So let's prioritize Transvaal. Our resources in reversing the cr crises caused by the London stock market crash must revolve around the extraction of our resources and the calming of the unrest in the Transvaal. Expanding mining operations there should help fix both situations. And we do have a little chippy. It's not great. It's really not great, but they live by a dude named Guy Halifax. And they're going to give us a ton of of naval XP every day when they're not busy repairing themselves immediately after blowing their engines up or something. Why did you blow yourself up already? And go ahead and do that as well. Alright, we have a new division, infantry, thank you. I really have no place to put you, so just kind of hang out for now. Social Spain was annexed. Cool. One and a half political power day. Monarchist Spain is looking pretty darn thick, not gonna lie. Something tells me they're probably gonna beat up the nationalists pretty darn well. It looks like the worker state of Belgium is doing pretty darn well as well against the kingdom of Belgium. What is France up to? Because they're random. And there goes them. They're social democrats. That's cool. And the United Kingdom. 
I, do, I made them go completely random. They're doing austerity measures. They're social conservatives. Jewel of the Empire. Harris's Bombers. Haig's Legacy. And we really don't know until they do the convention for next year. They're doing austerity instead of economic stimulus. The King appoints a new Governor Joan. News reached yesterday from London that the King has chosen Patrick Duncan to be the new Governor General of South Africa. Duncan is an outspoken supporter of the rule from London and has been a frequent critic of steps taken by our government to appease the more national Afrikaner elements of, of our society. This appointment has enraged extremists in our government who believe London means to keep our country under an iron fist. It seems as if what little stability we had is leaving us all faster. And of course I lose stability because London is being a big meanie. They are nothing but big, big meanies. Um, open markets. Hmm, can't really do much else here. Yeah, I mean, I guess I could... No, oh, there's no theorists. This would go with a generic industrial company, but that's okay. That's really just okay. I might as well get another military factory. Thank you, because I could really use one to make more guns. All right, let's grab one steel, too. I don't want to support those guys. We'll support the Soviet Union, because why not? Oh, and Brazil is not having a good time. Next up, on the docket, Mining Expansions. Our mines in the Transvaal are not being used to their full potential by expanding them. We can create more jobs while also securing many resources for our future. A little bit more steel, which could use, be used very much there, and a chromium that we don't really need. So, Hawker Hurricanes, great. It's still 1936. Let's get some better artillery. So we're ready for 1939 when it comes around. So we have the Union of Brazil, the United States of Brazil, and Brazilian People's State. Ah, the paternal autocrats under Balding Pelinho Correa. You guys are led by Mr. Luis Carlos Prestes, and then you have Mr. Generico. Oh, Elucidus Figueiredo. I don't know Portuguese, obviously. Wow, this looks like a really sad Colombia. Why are you so like that? Is that normal? Oh, no, no. They're supposed to own this. What the heck happened? Republic of... Why are you so big, Peru? Southern agitation. Uh, okay. Insulindian uprising. Another revolt against the British. Good. Very nice. Damaged democracy. Proud and victorious. Wow. I didn't realize they had their own focus tree. For Peru. Wow. Calls for a snap election with the economy plummeting even further by the day. And with no sign of a quick recovery, many in the government, including within our own party, are pressuring us to call a snap election for next year. While this is certainly within our power, it is entirely possible that such an election could see our party lose its majority in the House of Assembly to the newly formed coalition be between the ANC, the Dominion Party, and the Labour Party, or the long-standing nationalist coalition between the Central Party, a purified nationalist, and the OB. Unfortunately, the situation has left us without a choice, and we were forced to call for a new election in June of 1937. We had best start making all of the preparations necessary to defend our majority and prevent the country from falling into the wrong hands. <clears throat> Well, some might say it already has fallen into the wrong hands, Mr. Patrick Duncan. Hmm. Oh, and we get a little bit more political power. We could raise conscription. Hmm, status quo. Get more social conservatism. We get more stability. That's actually kind of nice. I might do that. We could... Yeah, it's not bad. Well, let's cut out the red tape. Get some more stability for now. That sounds kind of like fun. We got nothing else to do right now anyways. We get still... 1.3 political power a day, mining expansions, four, how about a fourth research slot? Scientific subsidies. The sciences are invaluable to the protection, or in the protection and development of our nation. We should look into investing in them to create an entirely new economic sector. Absolutely. And it looks like Italy is now called Regno d'Italia. Hello, Selassie, you have a generic focus tree. And they have gone Volkist. I thought I told them to go nationalists. Oh. Hmm. Italian foreign policy. They might ally the British. They might not. Challenge the line. That'd be fun if they did. I offered to purchase Malta. That sounds kind of like fun. Territorial concessions with the French. Yeah, undermine Serbia. Always a good idea. Just make sure you just realize you're probably going to lose a lot of casualties, maybe. Have a lot of casualties. Pan-Mediterranean policy. Unite the Mediterranean. Under Roman dominance. Huh. When's the last time I actually saw Italy go Volkist? I don't remember. Anyways, we got some early subs. It's 1937. I want to leave that thing there that for naval stuff. Both we'll go to disperse industry. We'll get another research slot soon enough in like a week. Well, a little more than a week. The Tsardom of Bulgaria, led by Boris the Third. They have a generic focus tree. The Ottoman Empire is still here. They're no, they're not Turkey. And they have, their, of course, their own special focus tree, which is very cool. Very cool. 
Armenia. We have Kurdistan, which of course the Turks or Ottomans really want, as well as Armenia. Armenia's looking pretty thick over there. Hmm. So now we shall do austerity. While we may, we may lend some assistance here and there, our main priority should be to allow the market to take care of itself. We should not be preoccupied fixing what our people can fix themselves. Ah, uh, and a fourth research slot. I know I was going to say I was going to do this, but I'm going to immediately just go ahead and keep doing uh, construction and getting through the industry part of our research tree first. And fast. And quick. Oh god, we still need so many guns to repair the holes in our guys' lines. You guys, half of you guys are that. Give me half of you guys. I'm just going to split, split you to become district forces. Just because you're just a little thicker. And I don't have the industry for support companies and motorized and stuff like that. Radio. Cool. Improved machine tools is where it's at. 1.3 political power. <clears throat> it is what it is. Portuguese Republic. Oh, yeah, you guys are the kingdom. Like, look at that naval XP. We've got 33 more naval XP. So the ANC announces a new coalition with a snap election coming up in June. The African National Congress has today announced that it will be forming a coalition alongside the Labour and Dominion parties in an attempt to win the majority of seats in the House of Assembly. To add insult to the Nationalists' injury, the Parliament has invoked the Statute of Autonomy to specifically overturn our law bearing non-whites from running in the election. The new coalition has taken advantage of this, and all three parties heavily favor increased ties with the Union or United Kingdom, alongside liberal policies of desegregation and cultural reconciliation. They are even running non-white candidates in a number of constituencies. Boer and nationalist politicians alike have lambasted these plans as radical and destructive for the nation and have fumed at the UK for overturning their law. For now, we can only hope that this doesn't cause too much more chaos in an already chaotic election. Or chaotic election. Are they just trying to enrage the Boers? It's like they don't live down in South Africa. Oh, hello. Check state. What's going on? This is demilitarized. Ah, uh, man, back in my day. Oh, we actually have a focus tree. But back in my day... We had Zapatoslavia. Wow. This looks like a very long focus tree. Very horizontal focus tree. Very cool, though. Very cool. Uh, Germany, what are you up to? Valkis, of course. Led, allied with the Dutch state. Uh, unknown focus. Yeah. That's a pretty German focus tree here. Looks pretty cool. Uh, it's always fun playing as the Valkis and trying to do well as the Germans. But let's go it alone. Our nation can only forge its own path if we, if we rely our own, on our own ingenuity and skill. We cannot ask, we can't ask the Empire for help, and I can't speak. We must go about our recovery efforts alone. Because right now we are only 23% national populist. Uh, promote status quo, more efficiency cap. Oh yeah, I definitely want to get another factory. Anti-Indian legislation. South Africa has seen large waves of immigration in recent years, with many immigrants coming from the British Raj. While we were prepared to be accommodating at first, the recent Indian revolt and continued instability in the region has turned the immigrant stream into a flood. In order to keep the more nationalists from abandoning the United Party, it has agreed to hear a series of anti-Indian and anti-immigration bills in the House of Assembly. While we are not technically allowed to legislate immigration quotas as per the Statute of Autonomy, we doubt the Empire will really care enough to stop us. Uh, populism. Ooh, stability sounds nice. We're all welcome here. Reject the bills. Let's set our own borders and stem the tide. Uh, cool, I guess. Cool. I kind of want to go down to regulated markets, but we only extract, ooh, like, 17, so that really wouldn't help us that much. And we're going to commission another civilian factory to get our numbers up as fast as possible. Uh, 1.38, interwar artillery. Great, 1937 stuff. Let's come back here and do better subs. This doesn't affect... Subs, this merely affects light ships and cruisers. So we're going to go with 1936 Submarino Boys. Very cool. Issue a civilian commission. Come on, game. Come on. And... Boom. There we go. Let's see. Look at that naval XP. It's looking so good. Go it alone. Yes. We shall be independent from the rule. And also, it's so weird if you're right. America has, like, another Florida called Baja, California. So weird. So incredibly weird. Uh, what's going on here? There's a little bit of lag. Kingdom of Poland, what are you up to? Led by Franciszka. The dude. They were annexed. Cool. Lithuanian support. 
rights for minor, minor ethnicity. So, the Transvaal Indian Party launches a mass protest, a relatively small organization to begin with. The Transvaal Indian Party has launched a mass protest in the heavily Afrikaner state of Transvaal over the recent legislation, which has heavily restricted Indian immigration in light of the recent chaos in the region. The protests have been surprisingly effective, though they've been met with violence. If we cave to them now, however, we show weakness just before the election. If we ignore them, the Afrikaners in the region may take matters into their own hands. Give them some concessions... We can afford to lose some support, right? Or ignore them. Unrest is to be expected with change. Unfortunately, that's the path that we have to go. Or, I guess for some people, fortunately, that's the path we have to go. But regardless, we want to go it alone. And we shall end this episode with going with less taxes. By reducing taxes on the wealthiest in our nation, our subsequent economic fortunes can flow from the top down and revitalize the economy. It'll also keep our donors happy. Huh. <laughs> Oh man, what are we, trying to run an election campaign? Oh wait, we are. So, that's where we're going to leave it here for today, my friends. We are trying to become an independent South African nation that might eventually rule over all of Africa. If you enjoyed today's episode, consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check my Discord link in the description below if you haven't already. And I will see you all tomorrow as we continue down our path of independence and freedom for some South Africans. Thanks for watching and hope you have a great rest of your day.